What is the greatest comeback to insult you've ever heard? 18th century British radical politician John Wilkes was told in Parliament by a political opponent, Sir, I do not know whether you will die on the gallows or of the pox. Wilkes shot back with, that depends, my lord, on whether I embrace your lordship's principles or your mistress. Wilkes shot back with, that depends, my lord, on whether I embrace your lordship's principles or your mistress. The lords observed with snide delight, he glanced, ashamed, from left to right. He stood to make his own reply. I know you are, but what am I? During WW1, Switzerland had a tiny standing army, but they were very skilled marksmen. Wilhelm II of Germany asked what 250k Swiss troops would do if he decided to invade with 500k German troops. The Swiss said, shoot twice and go home. Saw a clip of a stand-up comedian the other day, and he says something along the lines of, the first time I had sex it was terrible, the first time I had sex, and a woman chimes in with, you mean yesterday, crowd laughs for a while, and while the comedian is waiting for them to calm down you can see the gears turn in his head, once it gets down to basically a few chuckles, he just says, glad you remember, and the crowd just lost their shit, it was amazing not heard, but read. Easily the Spartans reply to Philip II of Macedon, as Philip II of Macedon was conquering Greek city-states left and right, Sparta was left alone. Philip had achieved a crushing victory, and Sparta was relatively weak and without walls. Philip sent a message to the Spartans saying, if I invade Laconia you will be destroyed, never to rise again. The Spartans replied with one word, if. This is actually where the word, laconic, came from. Most ancient accounts make the Spartans sound like the masters of trash talk. The Persians also told them at one point their arrows would blot out the sun and a Spartan replied that it'd be nice to fight in the shade. Also, it's a long repeated response, but when they were told to lay down their arms their response was, Molin Labe which roughly translates to, come and take them, the Spartans were a slogan-making machine. Another famous one was, e tan e epi taz either with it or on it. It was said by a mother to her son, when giving him his shield before going to battle. It means return home with it, or on it dead. Dropping the shield was the ultimate act of cowardice ripsorspice, shield dropper, was the worst thing that you could ever be, a combination of coward and traitor. As a side not the Greek army still uses the slogans. Edit, since this comment got some attention, here are some more interesting facts about the Spartans. They were good warriors, however they were terrible strategists. Their social system, based on a ruling caste of warriors exploiting a huge number of serfs and slaves, crippled their expansion potential and they only had few colonies. They won the Peloponnesian War, only because of treason and soon after they were eliminated from history, whereas loser Athens kept on being relevant. The Spartans were famous for not talking much. This was admired as a stance on life and immortalized in the quote, to laconize anesti philosophy in i.e., to talk like a Spartan, Laconia being the region, is to speak wisely. Modern Sparta is a small town in Greece. The people in the region still don't talk much and are extremely conservative to use a euphemism. Most notable thing about modern Sparta is that it is the only city in Greece that doesn't have a single traffic light. One of the random generated missions you can get in As Creed, Odyssey is a Spartan mother who basically says her son dropped his shield so go kill him. Whenever I get that mission, I'm like, harsh. Then I go kill the son and bring his dead body back to her. Didn't he wipe Sparta out eventually? Nope. They were left alone by the Macedonians. Interestingly it was the Visigoths who eventually sacked Sparta. That feels like a clash of timelines, but Sparta had continued throughout Roman times after it was conquered, Sparta became a popular tourist destination. It makes sense, but reading about stuff like this makes you really think about the fact that the civilizations we study today in history class also had history class in their schools. The Romans were perfectly aware of Greek and Egyptian history the same way we're aware of those things plus Roman history. It was a exchange between two co-workers a few years back, basically a slut shaming gone wrong. Person A had only ever slept with one person, their previous boyfriend that they were still obsessed with. Person B was the opposite and would bang a different person every week. Person A, I can't believe how many people you've slept with, I don't understand how people can have sex with someone they aren't in love with, Person B, well your ex-boyfriend seemed to manage it okay, Person A, silence as he dies inside, what are you looking at? I'm still trying to find out. Quiet guy in my art class got called queer bait. He replied with, if I'm the bait then you're the catch of the day, my 10 year old cousin was pushed aside by an older student at school who also felt the need to call him a gay child. My cousin told him not to get his hopes up. 
you wish, became the kryptonite to gay jokes in my elementary school for a while growing up, do your parents know you're gay? My first exposure to a trick question. Do yours. Yes my parents know you are gay, bravo. Do they know you don't know how to wipe your ass right, or do I need to tell them? Left to right obviously, s on a construction site one afternoon, different trades were working in the same area. Like silly team sports, the Sparkies always hang with the Sparkies and the Turd Wranglers always hang with the Turd Wranglers and any time they're together it turns into a pointless dick measuring contest, usually not literally, one particularly childish exchange saw two men chopping back and forth my dick biggest, blah blah blah. Finally one of them spits out this classic, I've got girth like a can of corn, and the clap back was unforgettable, but you've got length like a can of tuna, everyone busted up. Mr. Girth tried to hide his embarrassment, but was tied up. No come back. And a room of men laughing uncontrollably. Good times. My grandma asked my cousin, who'd had lots of partners and two kids at this point, if she was ever going to get married. Cousin, it's not the same nowadays. We don't buy cars without test driving them first. Grandma, yeah, but they don't let you put a hundred thousand miles on them either. Point goes to granny. One of my co-workers was cold calling customers, trying to get appointments to drum up business. One of them told him to, go fuck his hand, and he responded with, I've got that penciled in for three. I should be done by four if you'd like to come in for an appointment then. The guy laughed his ass off, and ended up coming in for the appointment. I had a co-worker, also in sales, also cold calling, a take no shit middle aged woman. When people hung up on us, sometimes we'd call back and play dumb, often people would realize they were being rude, this is more business to business. Anyhow, this lady couldn't help herself, so she'd call back, feign the same polite friendliness, and say, hey sorry, I think we were rudely disconnected, in high school, we congregated in our cliques around the benches. One friend is cracking his knuckles and did this fairly often. Another friend saw this and remarked, you pop your hands a lot, you must jerk off a lot. The friend that popped his hands immediately looks at him and calmly says, you pop your jaw a lot, you must suck dick a lot. Weirdly enough no one laughed, we just all shrugged and took it as a logical explanation. It's been over 20 years and I still think about the logic. Edit, wow look at those numbers thanks internet fam. As for the informative comments about changing, clicks, to, cliques, for the sake of the story I think I'll leave it as is. Glenn McGrath, Aussie cricketer, got frustrated with Edo Brands as his every attempt to stump Brands failed. This is what happened next, McGrath, why are you so fat? Brands, because every time I fuck your wife, she gives me a biscuit, my grandma got into a fight at the grocery store with a guy who told my nine-year-old brother to move the fuck out of the way. They were going at it and his final words were, suck my dick, bitch, she said across the store, if I could find it, bitch, Winston Churchill, of course. Lady Nancy Astor, Winston, if you were my husband, I'd poison your tea. Churchill, Nancy, if I were your husband, I'd drink it. Winston, you are drunk, disgustingly drunk, yes, madam, but you're fat. And when morning comes, I shall be sober. I work at a hotel. A few years ago this guest got into a spat with our security officer over something, but she wasn't getting whatever she wanted so she told him he was full of s underscore 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 our security officer replied immediately, no I'm not, I took care of that this morning. But thank you for your concern for my good health and regularity. At this time I was about to bust up laughing so I had to excuse myself to the back office, and as I was leaving I heard him continuing on with this lady, deadpan, but I promise I eat a healthy diet full of fiber. It warms my heart to know you're concerned with me having regular bowel movements. So the next time I'm constipated I know you're thinking of me, it continued on and on, and all the more he's playing this deadpan and it's making the lady madder and madder, and I'm in the back laughing so hard I'm nearly crying. After that spiel was over though she didn't give us any more problems the rest of the night. A friend of mine was getting bitched at by these two identical twin girls in a class one had once, he replied with a troubling look on his face and said, if you two are identical, how come only one of you are hot? That dude played the long game as those two girls looked rather preplexed for the rest of the session. I can't remember the best one I've heard, but I can remember the best comeback I ever did. It is also, in fact, the only good comeback I ever did. I was in 7th grade, and we were in the locker room after gym. People were discussing shoe sizes because this one kid had enormous feet. I don't know if I have small feet, but mine were the smallest. 
they said, small feet, you know what that means, I didn't mind too much, but one kid crossed the line. He said, don't worry, fella, there's like 10 different ways to make it bigger. So I said, have you tried all 10? Not very impressive, but it shut him up. I was the one insulted, but not the one with the comeback. I was out with a co-worker and her friends and my buddy and I were leaving a little too early for her sensibilities. She jokingly got up in my face and said, smell that. Smells like pussy. A guy playing at the pool table next to us stepped forward and said, I'm sorry, that must be me. I just ate. It was amazing. I was 13 years old, carrying a bunch of books for the teacher. Some joker thought it was funny to pretend to fall right in front of me. I told him, don't fall for me man. My whole book carrying crew and his prank crew all started bursting into laughter. I didn't register what had happened until much later. When I was in high school I had an ancient history class with a teacher named Mr. O'Neill. He was a really educated and well-spoken but quiet younger guy, a bit chubby with curly blonde hair and liked wearing bow ties. In this same class was this kid named Jake, who was one of those kids that always acted like a smartass to every teacher in order to try and get a laugh. He was so annoying he actually had a stapler thrown at his direction by another teacher, which is a whole other story I told the other day. Anyway, I remember one day Mr. O'Neill was having trouble reaching the string to pull down the screen for the projector. He would make little jumps and swat at the string, but just barely couldn't get it. Jake noticed and saw an opportunity so he yelled out, what's the matter Mr. O'Neill, can't reach. Him and his buddies chuckled to themselves like a bunch of goons in the corner. Mr. O'Neill replied, no, Jake, I'm just getting my morning exercise. And then he started touching his toes. It wasn't the most clever comeback, but coming from a guy like Mr. O'Neill it was pretty hilarious. More importantly, it shut Jake up and the majority of the class started laughing at him. Mr. O'Neill became a bit of a hero for being the guy to shut down one of the annoying smart ass kids that would always disrupt class. I have a bunch but one of the more memorable ones was back in 8th grade. For context I didn't make the basketball team 7th grade, but I made the team in 8th grade. This kid that was on the team the previous year but didn't make it currently was really upset and telling me how bad I am and blah blah blah. I told him that if he is better than me then why didn't he make the team, and he replied with, it's just cause of my grades bro. So I replied with, oh so you're just fucking stupid then. He gave up cause it was either accept that he was bad or accept he was an idiot so.